Alrighty, how you guys doing today? I'm CJ uh, from Pure Flow Air Dog. Today we have a 2010 Ford on the lift. Uh, we're going to go through the install of a DF165 4G on this vehicle. Uh, this will be the same install on your DF100s, uh, and very similar on your DF200s, uh, as well as your original Air Dogs. Um, there'll be a few minor differences, but this is the you know 165 4G. Uh, it's going to fully bypass your factory frame rail pump. So we're going to kind of start here. By opening the box and showing you, you know, what you're going to be receiving. Alrighty, so first thing when you open the box, you're going to notice this little sealed package. This is going to have your AirDog install manual as well as your green warranty card. Do make sure to fill out that warranty card and send it in to us for the full lifetime warranty. Um, or you can also register this on our website at pureflowairdog.com. You're also going to have your sealed weather pack connector harness. Uh, we'll set this to the side here, um, as well as 20 foot of the uh, black air dog push lock hose. All right. Then you're going to have the pump itself. You're going to come. It's going to come with two sandwich plate mounting brackets. And then there's going to be a small box in here. This is going to be where all your install fittings are. So it's going to come with a customer service o-ring kit. This is just a replacement of every o-ring that would be in the kit. So throw this in your glove box just in case you ever need anything to service. Come with your hardware kit needed to install uh, and actually mount the pump on your frame rail. All the individual fittings needed for the install. Um, this is going to be your return Y. This is what we're going to use to tie the two factory returns together and add your air dog return for a nice seamless, no need to cut into your filler necks, anything like that. A um, couple zip ties for you so you can clean up your wiring and hose uh, up tight and clean. This is a spacer block that will be used with the sandwich plates uh, and cradle bracket. The cradle bracket be right here. So just to space it off the frame rail, we'll go a little bit more in depth on that when we go to install it. It's going to be fairly simple, so only basic hand tools needed. Uh, I have a couple wrenches here, uh, 3 quarter, 5 eighths, and 9 sixteenths. Um, we may have to add a few as we go, but that'll be the basic that you need. A uh, handful of sockets needed to remove the factory pump from the frame rail and put your, assemble your cradle brackets. Uh, we're going to use a quarter inch nut driver just a, or impact just a little bit easier than using a ratchet. Um, we are going to, just for ease of install, pull the front drive shaft, so we got a little quarter inch ratchet here. Um, basic fuel line disconnect tool, you'll need to do this on a couple lines. Pick this up at any of your, you know, O'Reilly's, uh, Advanced, AutoZone, anything like that. Uh, and then just a good Allen wrench set. Now this step isn't going to necessarily be needed when you guys are doing your install, um, but your factory fuel pump's going to be mounted right here. So just for a little bit more ease of you guys seeing and for video purposes, we're going to go ahead and just pull these U-joint uh, straps and kind of hang the drive shaft. There's really not a need to completely remove it. Alrighty, so now that we got those U-joint straps pulled off there, we can kind of just push the drive shaft out of the way. Do tape these up so your caps don't fall off, you know, lose needle bearings, then you're doing a U-joint. Um, but we're gonna start now by removing this factory lift pump. You're gonna have your power connector here. You're gonna have these two fuel lines um, and these two fuel lines. Um, it appears on the later year one here, it doesn't actually have uh, quick connect needed to use the fuel line disconnect tool, so that'll be nice. Uh, just push the couple tabs and pull them off. Alrighty, so now that you got those fuel lines off, uh, the three electrical plugs disconnected, we're going to go ahead and loosen these three 13 millimeters. You'll be able to pull that factory fuel pump completely off your frame rail. There may be some residual fuel. <laughs> Alrighty, so now you're gonna to wanna to locate a good spot on your frame rail to mount your air dog. Uh, being that this is a crew cab long bed truck, there's you know ample room. So it's looking like we're gonna go right here because there's plenty of room above and below. Um, also not gonna be in the way of any drive shafts, anything like that. So we're gonna get the sandwich plates together, uh, determine a height uh, and get the air dog mounted. So once you determine what height you're gonna to wanna to mount your air dog, we're gonna assemble the cradle bracket and sandwich plate. 
So we'll go ahead and get your bolts installed. We're gonna take a lock washer and that. We're just gonna go, go ahead and finger tighten these and then we'll pick it up here in a second. So now that you determine the height that you would like to install your air dog, um, and you got your cradle bracket bolted up to your sandwich plate, you're gonna wanna take your air dog, put it on your cradle bracket here, and we have these quarter 20 bolts. Let me go ahead and get them all put through here. And yeah. Alrighty, so we went ahead and got these started because uh, it's a two hand job, but basically what you're gonna wanna do is take your wrench and your impact and just kinda Get these all nice and snugged up. You guys don't have to, you know, tighten these extremely tight because with the added clamping force of all three bolts, it's not going to want to move. Now we're going to install the AirDog Quick Connect fittings into the base. Make sure that you oil these threads as is aluminum to aluminum to make sure that they don't gall or cause you any issue. This is an O-ring seal, so there's no need to tighten it extremely tight as you're relying on an O-ring to seal, not a metal to metal contact. So now we're gonna install our 06J2044516. This is gonna be your return fitting. Also, obviously make sure that you oil it, um, but this is gonna be a smaller fitting. So verify or make sure that you do not over tighten this because it will break. So once you have that finger tight, you're just gonna to wanna to barely snug it up with a wrench and that's good to go. Like I said, that's an O-ring seal. So there's no need to get it extremely tight. So now we're gonna start assembling the AirDog suction hose. We're actually gonna connect directly to the top of the factory fuel module on this truck. Um, there's really no need to drop the tank. Um, as you can stick your hand up from the driver's side here, and it's, I mean, it's right here. It's a half inch quick connect with two locking tabs. So now we're gonna start the assembly of our suction hose. We know that it's gonna take a half inch 90 on top of the tank. So we're gonna go ahead and assemble this on the table opposed to underneath the truck. So you wanna get a, you're gonna wanna get these fittings nice and oiled up as well as the interior of the hose. Kind of spin it around here and make sure we get it all oiled up. And then in one motion, you're gonna to wanna to sink it. You can actually twist it while you're doing it and that'll aid in sinking all the barbs. Alrighty, so now that you got your half inch 90 pressed in your hose, you're actually gonna to wanna to route this over top of the tank. This is gonna vary depending on how you guys wanna do your install. So we're gonna get this pushed up there um, and then get it connected to the top of the tank. Alrighty, so once we got this routed, we're going to connect it right back to that factory tank connection on top of the tank. Alrighty, so once you determine the length that you would like for the uh, suction fitting on, on the air dog itself, you're going to go ahead and cut your hose. And then we're going to oil the interior of this hose, oil our half inch straight, get it pressed in there, and connect it on the air dog. Alrighty, so now we're going to assemble the air dog outlet hose. On one side, we're gonna have a half inch straight. On the other side, we're gonna have a male half inch quick connect. So we're gonna get these oiled up and pressed in. Alrighty, so now that we assembled our air dog outlet hose, we have it connected at the air dog pump itself. We're gonna connect the outlet hose to your factory hose. So this is gonna be on the hose set closest to your engine compartment. There's gonna be a 3 8 and there's gonna be a half inch. You're gonna take the half inch, click it directly into the air dog hose. We're gonna retain this factory line here. So now we're gonna go ahead and there's some nice factory loom. So we're gonna zip tie it up and run it along down the side of the frame rail. So now we're gonna start the assembly of your air dog hose using your 3 8 quick connects. It'll be 3 8 on quick connects on either end. Uh, and then we'll show you where we tapped in with that uh, return wide. So we're going to get this routed and clip it on to your air dog. So now we're going to install this fuel return wide. This line is no longer going to be used. This was the factory suction um, to your factory lift pump. We connected, disconnected it off the top of the tank. This is going to connect to your first return line and your second return line and then we're going to add the air dog return in there.
Alrighty, so now that you got that line snaked through, we actually tucked it behind this factory loom to verify they can never get next to the drive shaft and this factory line. We're also gonna zip tie it up nice and clean. But you're gonna tap in and connect your air dog return directly into here. So like I said, there's no need to modify your filler neck or anything, it clips right in factory and seamless. So now we got this air dog all plumbed up on this 6-4. We're gonna go ahead and get the lift sat down and wire the harness for it. You will first need to hook up the positive and negative battery terminals. You will then need to hook up the key on fuse tap. This will trigger the relay to turn the pump on. You'll need to mount the relay somewhere on the firewall. And then there's a two pin doish connector that plugs into the pump. All right, so we're looking to determine a good location uh, to mount the relay. Um, unfortunately, there's really not a lot of locations, so we're gonna have to use um, this ground, uh, but it will actually ground the relay, so it's not gonna hurt anything. Uh, so we're gonna remove this bolt and mount the relay. Boxes are kind of hard to get to, so I'm just gonna explain it to you guys. Um, we're gonna use the key on fuse tap uh, to tap into a key on powered fuse. Um, you'll have to remove this little, I'm not even sure what it is, to be perfectly honest with you. A 90 degree turn and it comes up, you can remove your fuse box lid. There's gonna be a row uh, towards the front of the truck that is just empty fuses that are just basically spares um, that are powered. Uh, it should be fuse location 69, a 10 amp fuse. You will tap into that fuse for key on power. Alrighty, so we went ahead and dropped the air dog harness down from the engine bay. You're gonna to wanna to run along the frame rail. We kind of just zip tied it up to the hose that we ran, um, bundled up any excess nice and clean. I went ahead plugged in directly to the top of the air dog pump itself. So we got the filters snugged up. You don't have to get these super tight guys, just make sure they don't leak. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing primed up, get it started. Now that we have the air dog all wired up, we're gonna wanna power it on. Uh, listen for the tone change as the pump primes before you start the vehicle. It's gonna probably be hard to hear through the video as it is a 4G in it, so it is very quiet. But it should be good to go now. Start it up and we're going to go for a test drive.